So hi everyone. In this video, we're going to discuss um, the profitability criterion and it's the third uh, requisite in our derivation of a firm's individual supply uh, curve. Okay, so in the last video, we discussed that uh, the firm, okay, the, the goal of the firm is to maximize its profit and we got the first order condition and the second order condition. The first order condition suggesting that P should be equal to SMC and we can isolate out a Q. And the second order condition guaranteeing that the SMC curve or the short run marginal cost should be upward sloping. But uh, there's a third condition and I think it's the most intuitive and the most important and that's called the profitability criterion. In this case, the context of a perfectly competitive market. So we'll explain it first in words, then we'll graph it afterwards. So in here, let's follow. When the price, okay, in the market, again, the firms in this market, since it's perfectly competitive, take the price as given. If the price is less than the minimum average variable cost, the firm will incur a loss, okay? such that the profit of the firm, okay, the profit of the firm is something less than the negative of the fixed cost. So remember, a firm has both variable cost and fixed cost. Thus, the firm will maximize profit by producing Q is equal to zero, since in this case, the profit is just negative fixed cost. Essentially, we're going to assume that for now. Okay, now, in this case, there will be... Um, if all the three conditions are satisfied, the first one being our FOC, the second, the SOC, and the third, this criterion, okay, the firm will supply a, a maximized amount, okay, or the um, an optimal amount based on the profit maximization criterion if the price is greater than or equal to minimum ABC. But if the price is already less, okay, than the minimum average variable cost, it should not produce, i.e. it will leave the market. Now, I know words are kind of hard to, you know, that's kind of hard to understand just by trying to visualize it, but I think now a graph would be in order. So let's have a graph here. So you'll notice that in here we have a graph for the market, okay? This is your market supply and market demand, okay? And you also have a graph for, uh, for your firm supply and demand. And the goal of this part in this video will be to derive essentially what the firm's supply curve is. Okay, so let's start. Okay, now uh, this graph here, the graph to the left, again, this pertains to the market supply and demand. And we here, we have this one is market supply. This is market supply. And we have here three market demands so market demands okay and again price is set upon the intersection of demand and supply like our basic economics so at point a at our initial equilibrium okay at point a the price is set at p1 at point b this is set at p2 and at point three this is set at p3 okay so say that's a demand shock that uh, shifted demand to the left okay so now analyze these prices here if you recall we said and we illustrated in the a few a couple of videos ago that the demand curve faced by an individual firm is essentially just the price okay so this p1 here this is actually the demand curve of that firm this is the demand curve of that firm, and this is the demand curve of the firm. So D1, D2, and D3. These are three different demand curves of firm faces. Okay, now let's analyze each. Okay, when the price is set at P1, notice that the firm, okay, will produce somewhere here based on the conditions, and it will produce this much. Q, let's say Q1. It will produce that much of the good. Okay. Now, the cost okay, co associated with producing that good is only until uh, is only until here, okay, until short run average cost here. So it's only until here. So the firm will reap 
an economic profit, okay, it will reap some economic profit equal to that distance there. Okay, that's their marginal profit. Okay, the firm still has excess profit, okay, to deal with, to, to be able to uh, spend and do whatever it wants. Okay, and excess profits in the market is an incentive for other firms to enter. So when more firms enter, the price generally goes down because quantity goes up. So what happens is, um, say in this one, we are now with P2. This is now the demand curve of the firm. Okay. Notice that at this point here, okay, at this point here, SAC is equal to SMC. There is equal to that demand curve. So the firm okay, makes no economic profit. That doesn't mean the firm doesn't make an accounting profit, but it makes no economic profit. Okay, The firm along that point, along our second demand curve, makes no economic profit. Okay, Now, remember the profitability criterion states that a firm, okay, the firm will choose to produce Q star okay, is equal to Q P. For any price okay, greater than or equal to the minimum of AVC. And it will produce nothing when P is less than minimum AVC. Okay, so let's illustrate that. At this point, the initial demand curve, of course, it reaps a profit okay, at this point. So the firm will choose to produce. In here, notice at this point, this is still, say, point uh, 2 here. This point is still way above minimum AVC that's here. This is minimum average variable cost. It's still way above that, so the firm will still produce, even though economic profit is zero. Now, that may be perplexing to some, but hear me out, okay? While economic profit may be zero, okay, that doesn't mean the firm doesn't make any form of accounting profit, okay? So the firm will still opt to produce, okay? Now, here, okay, at this point, say point three here, notice that we are now at the minimum of average variable cost. And in fact, this is the last point the firm will choose to produce. Now, the firm here makes an economic profit that is negative, okay? That's negative effectively of fixed cost. Now, where did the fixed cost come from? Notice we have a short run average cost here and we have average variable cost. The distance in between them, say that distance there, that distance represents your fixed cost, okay, right? Because anything that's not variable, of course, it's fixed. So that distance there is the fixed cost. So, okay, at this point here, the profit is essentially negative fixed cost. So while the firm may not be making an economic profit, it should still choose to produce because at least it can recuperate part of the fixed cost, okay? It will incur the variable cost and it cannot recuperate that back, but at, uh, I'm sorry, it, it will incur the fixed cost and it and they cannot recuperate that back, but at least they'll be able to at least uh, pay for part of the variable cost. So the firm will still choose to produce just so that uh, they can reap back, okay, or get back something out of it, okay? And note, even in this case here, it doesn't mean that accounting profit is zero. It means that economic profit is zero. Now, when we go to a point lower than that, say here, okay, this is a case wherein the costs are just too huge for the firm. There is no incentive for the firm to produce and the firm will leave the market. So we'll get into more of that once we bring market demand and market supply together. But that's the case wherein we have um, the demand curve and the firm and the supply curve of an individual firm. So that gives rise to our profitability criterion as stated below. Now, where is the supply curve in all of this? Well, the supply curve okay, is easily drawn, okay? And that's this one here, okay? That's this one here. So if we connect all points of your short-run marginal cost curve, again, that was... Um, Remember, that's the first FOC, okay? So we uh, P is equal to SMC. So in this point, so all that I'm shading there, this entire line there, okay? This is the firm's individual supply curve. So this is small QS, okay? 
So that's the firm's supply curve. And it starts at the point of minimum average variable cost and extends forward uh, until